morning everyone. We're going to talk about cartoon proportions in our final lesson. Um, this is a bit more fun than what we've been learning all week. Um, we're going to talk about how proportions transfer into cartoon people. Um, of course the proportions are all the same, but um, with cartoons you can exaggerate them. Make sure you're not exaggerating too much, but keeping within the uh, actual proportions of a human being. So. Um, these are some examples, like from Toy Story 3, how people are slightly exaggerated to make cartoonish, but they're still in proportion and within the limits of the rules of art. So, without further ado, let's get started with a sketch. Um, you want to use your um, body sheet as a reference for this. So, I'm going to start with my circle, as always. Um, my cartoony people tend to be more stunted and shorter and more chubbier, like so. But there's all certain different ways you can break the rule with keeping in the proportions. So, my head is going to be more curvier than this head. I often draw my heads like this in my cartoons. I'm going to draw my guidelines as always. The guidelines will be in the same exact place. My eyes will be big circles. There's all sorts of different ways you can draw cartoon eyes. Like for example, round and big, slanted. That looks derpy. Uh, there's all different ways and div uh, diverse ways you can draw eyes and noses and faces. You just want to look at, um, again, the different facial features of a race or a certain type of person. So make sure you keep lots of diversity in your drawings. So those are some eye examples. I'm going to keep mine round and girlish for now. Give her eye. I'm drawing the hair. Look at the shape of the hair. Don't look at the general flow. Just the shape. Let's just draw the top of the hair now while I get the body in. So the neck will not be as thick as you did in the body video. Um, your head's actually going to be kind of bigger than the body in most cases of cartoons. Or roughly the same size. So draw my usual joints for circles, uh, circles for joints, I mean. Um, always draw your joints for the beginning of the leg. Thighs, same size as the arm length. Let's finish up the hair. Again, no really flow, just general shape. Most hair has a very organic shape compared to a steady shape like a circle or square. So, joints for the arm. So now I have arms, bottom of the leg. And, um, cartoony sketches tend to be very bendy, they don't have to be perfectly angular. Your cartoon can be bendy or angular. It's totally up to you. Just remember your proportions rule and you will be all set to create your own style. And um, it takes a long time to develop your own style. You can't develop one instantly. I'm inspired by a lot of cartoons I watch and a lot of other people that I enjoy their artwork. So they slightly inspire my style. Everyone's art style is usually inspired by someone else. That's just how the artist world works. My nose can be a little C, nothing spectacular. Give her those. So there I have my sketch. Bring up the sketch. Um, like tidying it up a bit. If 
finalizing my line. Um, here's a hint. Your thumb turns into this, uh, your body. So never draw the thumb on this side unless your palms are out. Draw the thumb pointing in. This is why a lot of people tend to say, oh, your thumbs are backwards. That's what it means. This is a very common artist mistake, so don't worry about it. Alright, so now that my sketch is cleaned up, I'm going to talk about inking. So get your choice pen. And another thing, I found that Sharpie thin ink are actually very useful for beginners, so you can feel free to use those. Um, when drawing your inks, make sure you keep your hands steady and go slow to get crisp, clean lines. Make sure you go over them twice so you fill in all that space and definitely make sure your inks are steady. Um, here's some different types of shading. There's shading called cross hatching, which is gently brushing the pen against the paper, creating those lines, and then going over them in a different direction. You can make them thicker and lighter depending on the value. There's also scatter dot shading, which is jamming the pen out of the paper into scattered dots and then slowly going out until it's lighter. Like so. And there's different types of shading you can use with a pen, but it's all about value. So, um, let's get started with the inking. You can start anywhere on the paper, it's your choice, wherever you feel comfortable. Let's start with the cheek curve. Again, make sure pencil lines are defined so you know where you're inking. So fill in little areas of black space to emphasize shading, like it's right here. Um, cartoons tend to have pretty thick lines in most cases, especially uh, western cartoons. 